Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus again. This is episode two of three on tattoos. If you haven't listened to the first episode yet, make sure you go back and check that out. We talk all about the history of tattoos and how we got to this point where now we're going to talk about, you know, inventing the technology to make tattooing possible. So yesterday we talked about who started doing them first, how long they've been around, and today we're going to talk about what techniques we've used throughout history. And then later we're going to talk about future technology and I swear augmented reality tattooing. It's going to be so cool. So subscribe so you get all these episodes. But how does tattooing work, right? How does it work? To know that, you have to know a bit about how skin works, too. It's kind of a medical procedure. You probably don't think of it that way, but it is. If you decide to get, I don't know, a little butterfly on your left shoulder or something, just randomly, to signify how free you are, be unique, you have to go somewhere to a tattoo parlor and get tattooed. Chances are it looks like a little gun, the person probably wears gloves and it's like me, right? But what if you're doing this before 1891, which is when Sam O'Reilly put in the patent for the tattoo machine that is more or less the same thing we use today. Some of the first tattooing tools date back to ancient Egypt. Two types of tattoo tools have been found, wooden handled tools with sharp points dating back to about 3000 BCE. There are bronze, flat, and wide needles on like a handle as well. All sorts of little things, it looks like a comb. Traditional Polynesian tattoo implements were things like uh, charcoal or soil for the ink and then a wooden handle with needles attached to a comb or a rake shape. There are all sorts. The needles, in case you're wondering, were not made of steel like you would find today, but instead were made of more natural implements like bird bone or tortoise shell, sometimes shark teeth. Because the important point is to puncture the skin and then somehow get the pigment in there. In the case of the Polynesian tradition, you would puncture the skin and then use uh, ink made of soot and a variety of liquids like candle nut oil, sugarcane juice, coconut milk and water, and kind of rub it into the wound that you made. In Thailand, the ritual is called sakyant, or magic tattoo. And you use a six to 12 inch piece of bamboo with a sharp point at the end. It looks kind of like a quill. Or they might skip the bamboo and just use a six to 12 inch metal spike, no big deal. <laughs> In New Zealand, the Maori tribes used a chisel, also made of bone. They would cut lines and shapes into the skin. And then after the cuts, they would tap the chisel dipped in pigment into the lines so that they could get that pigment in there. If chisels or 12 inch metal spikes are like too hard rock for you, that's fine. You can use a tattoo machine today, so you don't have to do that. Although you can find people who do this traditionally. Today, you can use a tattooing machine or a tattoo gun. It was invented by Thomas Edison. And stick with me here, I know I said earlier it was invented by a guy named Sam O'Reilly, but let's tell the whole story. In 1876, Edison had a patent for something called the electric pen. It was supposed to make letter copying easier. It had a small motor and it would drive a needle up and down a pen shaft and as someone wrote, the pen would then create a stencil that could be easily copied. But when it came out, it turns out not a lot of people needed to write the same letter a bunch of times in a row. <laughs> so people weren't that excited about it. Except this one guy, artist Sam O'Reilly, was a tattoo artist. He was pretty excited about this electric pen thing. He received a patent in 1891 for a tattooing machine. And if you put the blueprints side by side of the electric pen by Edison, and the tattooing machine by O'Reilly, they're basically the same thing. A needle would gather ink through a reservoir and put it into, instead of paper, skin. Basically, that's how tattooing still works. If you look, and you can find this on the internet, uh, there are slow motion videos up close of what is actually happening when you're getting tattooed, and it's literally a needle stabbing you repeatedly really, really fast. But there are a lot of different types of ways to drive that needle. There's the pneumatic tattoo machine. It's very expensive. It runs on air compressors. Uh, that's what the word pneumatic means. Then there's the liner tattoo machine. It's affordable, but you can only use it once. The shader tattoo machine does exactly what it sounds like it does. It shades black ink into things, you know, and it operates more slowly, and it's known to cause less skin irritation and trauma. But we're gonna dive into two of the most common types, the coil tattoo machine and the rotary tattoo machine. The coil tattoo machine uses a direct electrical current to move the needle. So think of it like an on-off switch. Just picture that, okay? A tattoo artist steps on the pedal. 
that allows electricity into the system. A coil inside of the tattoo gun becomes magnetized. It becomes an electromagnet. The magnetized coil presses down on a metal arm that pushes out the needle. However, when that metal arm touches the coil, it breaks the circuit. So it's sort of like it turned it off again. The coil loses its electromagnetic force, pulls the metal arm back, pulling the needle out of your skin, but making contact again. So then it turns it back on. And then the needle pushes out, turns off the circuit, pulls back in, turns on the circuit, pulls out, turns off. So it's just this over and over and over again. Tick, 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 tick. The rotary tattoo machine is much simpler. It's a, a little more smooth as well. It's pretty simple. It has a rotating circle with a bar attached to it. And as the circle rotates around, the bar moves up and down and that pulls the needle in and out of the machine. It's quieter and it's much more fluid. Regardless of your technique though, essentially again, the same thing is happening. Whether you're using spikes or combs or machines or needles or whatever, there's this older D News video where we talk more about tattoo removal and about tattooing in general. It's, it's very cool. But essentially, we're stabbing the skin and we're putting pigment in there. But you have to understand how skin works because if you don't stab deep enough, it's not gonna take. There are a number of different layers to your skin. It's, it's a pretty amazing organ. But we're just gonna focus on the top two for this. So the top layer is the epidermis and then the second layer is the dermis. The dermis is where are the glands and collagen and fibers and blood vessels and nerves, where all of that stuff is. It, it's in the dermis. If the ink just got into the epidermis, the top layer of skin, it wouldn't really do anything, it wouldn't stay, because the skin cells on the top are constantly replenished. They're dying off and we're replacing them from the dermis back out. If you go into the dermis though, that's permanent. The ink has to go below the epidermis into the dermis. And once it's there, it should stay for a long time. The thing is, it's not perfect because we are a living thing. We have an immune system. That immune system doesn't like it when you put stuff in your body. So some of the ink that you get when you're tattooed is actually eaten by your own body. They're eaten by fibroblasts, which is a cell in your skin that helps heal wounds and produce collagen, which makes sense because again, tattooing is really just stabbing yourself over and over on a really small scale and then putting ink in your body, which your body sees as a foreign invader. Your immune system can freak out and then send special blood cells, which is why after you get a tattoo, there's usually a period of redness and swelling because that's your body attacking your tattoo with macrophages, essentially white blood cells. And this is also why tattoos tend to fade over time. I mean, one, the sun can fade it. Yes, that's important to know, but also your own body is slowly eating away at this thing. Your body is eating your ink, brah. It's a thing. Some of those macrophages will even go back through your lymphatic system to your liver, but most stay in the dermis, and that makes your tattoo visible. Tattooing is actually essentially wounding yourself. I've said it a few times, which doesn't sound great, but we've been doing it for a long time, and it doesn't seem to have any long-term effects. You know, it's not killing anyone. It's not hurting anyone that we know of, but there are risks, like mainly infections. It's a minor medical procedure. You gotta worry about dirty needles, you can get hepatitis, HIV, any other bloodborne pathogens. Allergies are also important, especially with the ink, which we're gonna get right back to in a second. There's also scarring, skin inflammation, and complications with MRI, magnetic resonance imaging machines. And I don't know if you guys remember, there's this crazy episode of House where LL Cool J has like tattoos and he gets a patient, he's on death row, and they like put him in the MRI machine, it's super cool. But sidebar, if he's a prisoner, how did he get tattoos? We're gonna come back to this house thing in a second. You can make a tattoo gun, don't do this at home, but you can make a tattoo gun with the motor of a CD player, an empty pen barrel, a spring of a stapler to get the needle, and a sandpaper piece to sharpen that needle. Then you make the ink out of soot taken from heated boot polish, baby oil, and a wick. Prison tattoos. Supposedly, actually, infections are uh, pretty rare. Kinda awesome. Anyway, and sidebar, back to house. This house episode, they had LL Cool J in the MRI machine and then his body reacts to that ripping the ink out of his skin. It's a little television, right? Because IRL, that's actually really rare. Mythbusters looked into it. There have been a small number of cases showing that this can happen. And we looked into it a year ago on a D News episode as well. And when it comes to whether this is true, it really depends on what's in the ink. 
The idea being, if there are magnetic particles in the ink, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable when you're in an MRI machine because it's using magnets to try and figure out what's inside of your body. It can also interfere with the MRI scans. It's just a side effect of tattooing. TBH, we're not really sure what's in tattoo ink. That's the big deal. Ink has color additives, but those additives are not FDA approved. They don't get attention from that unless something bad happens. But we do know that different inks, depending on the color, will have different ingredients. So red, let's start with red, the most dangerous, easy to remember, because it can contain mercury or iron oxide to make it red which is linked to cancer and birth defects, not good. Yellow can contain cadmium sulfide, which can cause allergic reactions when exposed to the sun. Blue can come from cobalt salts. Cobalt is magnetic, not great. Uh, and it's been known to cause granulomas, where tissue surrounds this invader to protect the body, and it can cause eye inflammation. Some other inks contain heavy metals like lead, antimony, beryllium, chromium, cobalt, nickel, and arsenic. But I don't want to scare you away. Most of the inks don't have any of that stuff. A lot of inks are made in-house at some tattoo parlors. So really, if you want to get that butterfly tattoo on your shoulder, and look, if you do, go for it. Go for it, man. It's awesome. But if you're worried, do your research. Find the right artist. Find the tools that they use. Ask them what pigments they have, where they get their ink, what's in it. Some parlors use non-metallic organic pigments. Uh, some, you know, have inks that make you feel better about stuff, which uses dried insect carcasses or sandalwood or Brazil wood. You know, they're supposed to be super upfront about this. This is their job. They're excited to tell you about it. If you're nerding out about it, they're nerding out about it. It's going to be great. The tools often are supposed to be sterilized as well, and they're sometimes uh, supposed to be opened in front of you, depending on the law in your state. It's a big deal, because it's basically a minor medical procedure. But again, it's up to you. Butterfly tattoo on your shoulder. Go for it, man. Maybe regular ink is just too basic for you. Maybe you want something more cool, more eye-popping. It might be possible with AR tattoos, which is what we're gonna talk about tomorrow, along with like all sorts of other cool tattoo technology. Earlier we mentioned Mythbusters, awesome show. Love it, obviously one of my favorite shows. And if you wanna watch every episode of Mythbusters, also all your other Discovery shows that you really love, like Airplane Repo, I know that sounds crazy, it's a really awesome show. Head over to the App Store, download the free Discovery Go app, you can sign in and watch all your favorite shows right on your phone, it's awesome. Link's in the description. Let us know down in the comments, would you do the technique with the, with the stabbing and the rocks and the metal spikes? Would you go for it? Would you do that? I don't think I would do it. I don't think I would want to get a tattoo that way. I have friends who've done it. I don't think I would do it. Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get more D News Plus. I'm Trace, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow.